Hey everyone, so finally got the new Wi-Fi Pineapple Smart 7 in and here is the box as it comes in the mail. Pretty nice and simple. So this just got released last week and I got it today on Monday. And it came in a little baggy. I wish they kind of did padding because as you can tell it got a little bit damaged. And so we'll see if anything on the inside uh, got damaged itself. So, first open it up. Everything is nice and packed with foam. Beautiful. We have a little descriptive uh, piece of paper. It says exactly what's included in here and exactly what the uh, status indications are for startup. So it looks like we have our three omnidirectional antennas. So that's one, two, and three. Beautiful. Then we have our cables for plugging in, which I love is that they moved away from doing the uh, the dual USB, a little split with the Y cable. And so this is just a USB-C to USB-C, beautiful. And then here is the Mark 7 unit itself in a nice non-static bag. Awesome, just what I love to see. So we'll go ahead and open that up. Actually, we'll go ahead and do this real quick. Awesome. So look at that. Nice Pineapple Mark 7 omnidirectional antennas on each side except the front. The front has a USB-C and a USB. Has a little clicker. Had to blur that part out. Awesome, beautiful. So what we'll do now is we'll just put the antennas on real quick, so you guys can see what it looks like with the antennas. A little more complicated than that would be. There we go. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. And let's get this facing the correct way. Same things for these ones. And then the very last one. There you have it. That is the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7. I'll make a little couple extra guides later on uh, how to set it up on the computer and exactly what you can do with this new tool. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hey, everyone. Uh, Boy Bite here. And today we have the brand new Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7. It's already been plugged into the computer via the USB-C, and it has done boot up, and we are now going to initial setup for it. So as you can tell, we are given two options. One is to quickly press, and then one is to hold down for four seconds. If you quickly press it, the Wi-Fi access point will be disabled. And if you hold it for four seconds, it will continue uh, being enabled. What we're going to do is we're just going to quickly press it because we want that to be disabled. Awesome. And now what we're going to do is we're going to wait, and then that should bring us to the next screen. Awesome. So now it's going to talk to us about downloading the latest firmware. and it's going to find an access point for us. And now that we have that, it's going to go ahead and download everything we need. All right, and now it is downloading and verifying the firmware for this new Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7. And then once it has found the new firmware, it will start automatically updating it. And make sure, as it says at the very bottom, do not power off your device while you're updating firmware. Uh, you don't want to brick your device. All right, so in my case, the uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7 has stopped alternating the colors. 
and then it went to a blinking blue for startup, went to Sol blue, and now it seems to be uh, random for the blue. So I'm going to give it a few more seconds. Oh, and there we go. It is done. Let's see what we get to do. All right, so here we are at the welcome page. We will click on begin setup. Then it says it's going to verify your device and wants us to click on the front. I'm just going to go ahead and click on it. And once the verification is done, it should move on to the next screen. Awesome. And I'll click on continue with ra radios disabled. So let's see what this says. It says, congratulations on your new Wi-Fi panel. We hope you enjoy this inaugural release of the Mark 7 firmware. If you're coming from a previous generation, you may find many new features and refinements to familiar, familiar components. To all new owners, welcome. The Wi-Fi Pineapple is more than just a Wi-Fi auditing device. It's home to a passionate community of developers, security professionals, and enthusiasts. Welcome. Join the community at community.hack5.org and be sure to arm yourself with the knowledge within docs.hack5.org. Now go forth and Pineapple, the Hack5 developers. That's very nice. All right, so it wants us to put in a general password for root. Awesome. Got that done. Go ahead and select the correct time zone. Never have time. <laughs> All right, so management, SSID, and open SSID. Just so you guys know, management is the one where you'll usually connect directly to the user interface. The open SSID is what anyone else joining will see. So if you guys you know, set up an evil portal, usually your open SSID is what people will connect through to go to your portal. And the management SSID will be the actual pineapple interface. So we'll just do Wi-Fi pineapple. And then Wi-Fi open. And then just. That passwords for everything for right now. We don't have people accidentally joining. Uh, reset your current country. Uh, it's okay if it's all open, although pretty far from everyone. All right, so here's the big setup right here. So uh, a lot of people don't understand exactly how this part works. So let me just clarify a couple of things. So the client filter configuration limits the scope of engagement by choosing what devices may connect. Uh, allow only specific devices or any device that isn't specifically on the deny list. So if you select allow connections, right, what that means is whatever you put in on that list is allowed to connect, okay? If you select deny, what's, whatever's on that list can't join. So here's the big part, the list, okay? So if you're not going to use a list and you don't want anyone to join, make sure you select allow, okay? And if you don't use a list and you want anyone to connect, Select deny. And the same thing goes for the SSID filter configuration, okay? Which is to specify which spoof networks with the pineapple uh, will allow associations for allow associations for only specific listed SSIDs or any SSID that isn't specifically listed. Right? So same thing for the list. If you want people to join that are on the list, select allow. Else deny. Okay. But if you aren't going to use a list, deny lets everyone join, allow lets no one join. Oh, uh, like I said, I'm far from everything. I'm not worried. Ooh, I like that, yeah. Let's choose the dark. <laughs> All right, so in terms of service, oh, God. Uh, I'll end up having to re-through all that later. And then setup's complete, and it's going to redirect us to the new user interface, which I'm super excited to see. Ooh. Awesome, so let's that. Okay, so the password you just set is going to be used for this. And oh, look at this. Connect to the internet. It looks like a Wi-Fi pineapple isn't connected to the internet. Choose one of the options below to connect. So we can either do a wireless client mode and internet connection sharing, uh, which is Tether, or we can do a USB Ethernet adapter. Uh, we'll, we'll select wireless just because I don't currently have uh, anything set up for that part. So it brought us over to wireless client mode. So what it's going to do is going to give us an option of what we can select to connect to. All right. Uh, we obviously don't want to connect to ourselves. So let's go through this. I'm not going to let you guys see what I'm looking at. 
And I'm going to connect, and that should put us up on the internet. Awesome. And it gives you a green check mark when it's connected. That's that's beautiful, by the way. Oh, and we can save that configuration. Ah, oh, that's nice. They actually went all out on this. I love that. Okay, so uh, after I did that, it brought us back to the main menu. Uh, it goes over system status, disk usage, connected clients, uh, SSIDs collected, the connected clients. It'll show everything here, what our current campaigns are, any notifications, the wireless landscape, news and updates. Uh, we should be able to get news. Since we are now connected to the internet, it should be able to pull that. Beautiful. Uh, this is the exact same thing we saw when we did the initial setup. Top right, we have warnings uh, saying that we have a potential filter misfiguration. They need to update the uh, CSS for this because obviously you can tell it's very, very hard to read. Uh, and when I clicked on that, it brought us over here. That's real nice. So let's actually select over to deny. So, God, that check mark is just super helpful. Oh my God, you have a built in shell? Are you kidding me? This is nuts, dude. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> they went all out on this. Look at this. That is nuts. Oh, that's beautiful. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Google Cloud where you can open up a shell right in there too. That's beautiful, I love that. All right, uh, and then so this is notification. So if you guys use stuff like uh, uh, Evil Portal, uh, it'll actually show who connects in the top right -hand corner as well. Uh, then we have help, check for updates, internet connection. I wanna check that one out. Okay, just the exact same menu before, reboot and shut down. This will actually come in handy a lot uh, if you guys move around with your pineapple a lot. So like, let's say you go to a university for a demonstration or you're you know, on the site. This is going to help a lot. Uh, that way you can just, you know, it'll bring you to where you need to go to set everything up. I love that. All right, so let's go to the very first one. Obviously, again, this exactly shows our system status and everything else. Uh, campaigns, they went over this about how to set up a campaign, right? So let's do new test. In a campaign mode, reconnaissance, monitor only, uh, passive assessment, active assessment. Uh, so let's just read these out. So reconnaissance monitor only is to passively monitor a client device and access point activity within a defined region of the Wi-Fi environment. The client device assessment passive will identify client devices susceptible to basic rogue access points or evil twin attacks. Uses a passive Pine AP mode to mimic access points only upon direct request. Depending on filter configuration, client devices may be allowed to associate with the Wi-Fi pineapple. And then the client device assessment active, identify client devices susceptible to advanced rogue access points or evil twin attacks. Uses an active PineAP mode to broadcast an SSID pool mimicking all access points listed. New access points may be dynamically added to the pool depending on filter configuration, client devices may be allowed to associate with the Wi-Fi pineapple. Uh, if the Windows update, go away. All right, so let's just do a reconnaissance monitor only. Ooh, we can select the duration, 30 seconds. Sounds good to me. Uh, we don't have anything set. That's fine. Nothing set. And then let's do... God, see, that is beautiful. We can set up a report interval. Let's say we want it every five minutes. Enable that campaign. Uh, I want the HTML report. Yep, perfect. I actually like that where you can set exactly where you want it. Make sure if you run into an issue, you, I don't know if this is actually going to make the directory if you specify one. Yeah, so I don't know if it will make you a directory, so make sure you have the directory made ahead of time just in case. And then, oh, I love that. We can enable uh, email reports. Not going to set that up yet. Uh, if you guys haven't seen how to set up Cloud CT, I have another guide on that. Don't need to do that right now. And then I'll save the campaign. And there we go. And then if we want to turn it off, we can disable it. And so you know, it takes a couple seconds to re-enable it. That's beautiful. So let's go over here. So uh, this is where you do the scanning. And I love how they have a new handshakes tab. That's beautiful. So let's do a 30 second scan. I'll probably blur the results out for you guys so you can't figure out where I live. And we'll see exactly what goes on. So let's see if we can actually, oh, it is complete, but it didn't feel like 30 seconds, but I guess so. All right, so obviously I'm going to blur everything out for you guys, but that is locked. God, I feel like that's so much faster than the, than the old one, too. 
So as you can tell, uh, over here you have, you know, clients on those networks. Beautiful. Uh, I'm not going to go for any handshakes. All right, and then so this is where it'll go if it captures any uh, actual SSIDs. So what that means is if you put this in the middle of, you know, an apartment complex, every SSID, so every, you know, wireless network that people have, so anyone who has their own Wi-Fi router that, you know, isn't hidden, will pop up in this pool. So that's beautiful. So client IP, clients, we can see who's all connected to us. We can filter with our list that we previously talked about. Logging. God, they need to update the colors on that. That's horrible. Oh, so, oh, we can change the colors ourselves. I love that. Awesome. Good job, guys. The enterprise. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Got to blur that too. <laughs> All right. And then here is what I'm looking forward to is the new module manager. So as Darren kind of talked about in his previous video, uh, this is where you will be able to add uh, new modules and they're going to start getting people to actually build like top-notch ones and not ditch their projects over time. So let's see what we got available right now. So we have TCP dump, which you guys, if you guys are good with Wireshark, but you have never used TCP dump, learn how to use it. Uh, MDK4, cabinets, HTTP peak, people portal, and MMAP. So while people don't really use HTTP anymore, there are some internal networks and some websites still that actually use HTTP. So what this tool does is that when you guys, you know, have someone come through you through like using an evil portal attack, this will actually grab uh, like images and cookies and all that fun stuff. So like if someone's going to, you know, a naughty site and it's just over HTTP, you'll actually see all the pictures they're viewing as well. Uh, evil portal is awesome. I believe I have a guide on that. If I don't, I'll get one up. And then MMAP, as always, your best friend. And then, ooh. So then it goes over developing modules. Hmm. Let's open developer documentation real quick to see what it's all about. Huh, we'll get into that uh, some other time. Let's go to the settings. Settings includes setting your password, setting your time zones. Uh, the, so the button on your uh, front of your Wi-Fi pineapple, if you guys don't know, you can actually set up a script and tell it what to do, uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, and seeing as it's a bash script, uh, I would probably state that you can also set up a script to back up stuff if you want to as well. Uh, resources, USB devices. So like, let's go back to this real quick. So on the button script, uh, Something I think you could probably end up doing is if you have a uh, USB device attached, you can back up all your loot before it turns off. That'd be nice. Or you can just set it to actually turn off the device too instead of just doing reboot. Uh, resources, don't have to worry about that. USB devices. All right, software updates. We can check for updates. Web interface. We can set our themes. Cloud C2. Oh, that's nice. So if you have your Cloud C2 uh, setup, you can just attach your file from right there. Love it. Wireless landscape. Oh, that is so nice. Look at that. So it says that there's 41 access points nearby. There's five clients currently and four unassociated. I love this. They did excellent on this. Now the question is, is whether or not it's actually going to work. Because as some of you guys know, there were a couple issues with the previous ones with, with the firmware and the updates not being top notch, you know. Uh, but so far it's looking pretty good. So I'll put this through its paces and see, you know, what's working, what's not working, and get back to everyone. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.